Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. In the previous video, we discussed about how to calculate the maximum operating frequency or minimum time period of a digital design. In this video, we are going to discuss about whole time violation. Let us get started. In a complex digital design, there can be millions of flip flops, so there exist millions of flip flop to flip flop paths. If there is any hold violation, even in a single path, our design is not going to work. Let us see how to calculate hold time violation. I have taken this path just to illustrate how to calculate hold time violation. This is a clock which is going to both the flip flops of a critical design. And let us talk about this positive edge. At the positive edge, both the flip flops are going to pass their input value to their output. And we know all the flip-flop has whole time requirement which means input to the flip-flop must be stable after the positive edge of the clock for some minimum time called whole time so that its functionality should be as expected otherwise it can go to metastable state and its output will be unpredictable let us take our attention to the whole time requirement of flip-flop 2 at this positive edge when it just started passing its input value D2 to Q2 at the same time flip-flop 1 will start passing its input value D1 to Q1 and it takes time equal to TCQ to give its output to combination logic and combination logic will take time equal to TCL to give its output to the input of flip-flop 2 now in this case if TCQ plus TCL if it is less than the whole time requirement of flip flop 2 it is clearly an condition of whole time violation and our flip flop 2 will malfunction it will go into metastable state so its output will be unpredictable and our complete design is not going to work so for any path to work without whole time violations whole time requirement of a capturing edge flip flop must be less than or equal to sum of propagation delay of throwing edge flip flop and combination logic delay between the two flip flops it is quite clear from this equation that uh, those paths having less combination logic path delay are more prone to whole time violations and those circuits having zero combination logic path delay are super prone to whole time violations for example all the uh, clock frequency synchronizers has zero combination logic bar delay so they are very much prone to whole time violations moreover uh, whole time violations are independent of clock frequency they simply depend on the path architecture and corresponding delays in the path with this i am going to end this session and in the coming videos we will see the impact of clock skew on the whole time violations Friends, those who has not subscribed my channel yet, please subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can get the notification of all the videos published by us. Thank you so much for watching.